God bless you. I am Apostle Barry Glover. I welcome you to today's message, which is Imagine It, Part 7. This message is the conclusion of Imagine It. Let us pray. Father, we come to you today in the spirit of Jesus Christ. Lord, we need your gates with thanksgiving. We come to your courts with praise. We magnify you. We exalt you. We lift up the name of Jesus, the only name given by, by me and must be saved. Thank you for the people you saved, healed, delivered, prospered, and made whole in Jesus' name. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for the word today. Imagine it. Thank you for bringing the word into our hearts with all clarity, understanding, and power. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Uh, we have determined by our study in the word of God that our imagination should be used in a godly and positive manner. We are living according to our imaginations. We should never check, we should never imagine vain things. We should never imagine vain things. Vain things will not uh, prosper us. Vain things uh, cannot help us in any way. And on the contrary, vain things will cause people to be harmed, destroyed as a result of those imaginations. Uh, the word vain means lacking substance or worth. We should only imagine things that are, are worth, are worth to the kingdom of God. And we should imagine things that are of worth to our well-being and household members. The word vain means lacking worth. Uh, it also means foolish. And foolish is lacking good sense or judgment, resulting from misinformation, unwise. An archaic definition means insignificant, insignificant, worthless. We should never conceive worthless imaginations. Our imaginations should derive from the Word of God, and they should be based on sound knowledge, which is the rightly divided Word of God. Uh, imagine a vain thing is like a person imagining that they cannot get out of the difficulty that they are in. That's a vain imagination because the Lord is our help. Now that's the right imagination to conceive in one's heart and to have uh, stationary as the imagination of one's heart is that the Lord is a present help in times of trouble. He's our refuge, our shield, our high tower, our deliverance, hallelujah, our savior, praise God. So to imagine uh, that the Lord is our Savior, and imagine whatever we face, the Lord shall deliver us. That is a good and accurate imagination. But to imagine that there's no help for one's person, that is a vain imagination. And to imagine, you know, people uh, devise lies with their imagination. They see that they make up a lie in their heart, and, and they see themselves going about to spread gossip and lies. Well, that, uh, those imaginations are vain imaginations. They shall not profit the people. Whatever shall not profit you, you should not have an imagination of doing that. Hallelujah. Whatever shall not profit your, your neighbor, well, then you shouldn't imagine uh, things uh, that would not profit your neighbor. Uh, Jonah Chapter 2, verse 8 says, They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. That's true. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Psalms 2, verse 1 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? You know, <clears throat> There were people in the Word of God on, on occasion were imagining themselves defeating God. That's a 
vain imagination. It's worthless, and, and, and plus, it cannot be uh, done. Hallelujah. God has all power. So do not imagine vain things. Our vanities defined are lack of usefulness, worth, or effect, worthlessness. Now we'll read in Jeremiah chapter 23. Hallelujah. We shall conclude this uh, message concerning Imagine It, part 7. This uh, message is the conclusion of Imagine It. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 23, praise be to God, verse 16 and 17 says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart. So we know these are not God's prophets because they speak in visions of their own hearts and not the visions of God that, have, that were placed in their hearts. These people speak in imagination from their own heart so they conceive those imaginations from the wicked one. So let's read again at the beginning. Thus said the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord hath said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. Let's read verse 21 through 26. I have not set these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Am I a God in hand? saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? saith the Lord, do not I feel heaven and earth? saith the Lord, I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesied lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Verse 22 says, I mean verse 32 says, Behold, I am against, God said, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and call my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit this people at all, said the Lord. See, words produce imaginations. And here in this account, there were prophets, false prophets that went forth and they were speaking to the people, telling them that they would have peace, even though the people were involved in evil doings. But the prophet said that things were all right with them and peace would be with them. And God did not send those, those people because they were, uh, they were lying. But the lies that they spoke uh, uh, were the imaginations that appeared in the people's hearts and the people received those e wicked imaginations and it caused them to err, it caused them to go astray. Hallelujah. The message is imagine it. This is the conclusion of imagine it. You know, uh, praise be to God. Uh, it's, you cannot do a thing that you have not imagined to do. What you consistently imagine yourself doing is what you shall do. In order to do a thing, you must see yourself doing that thing. If you do not see yourself doing a thing, then you shall not do that thing. If you want to stop doing a thing, then stop imagining yourself doing that thing. You cannot do what you do not imagine yourself doing. People that imagine evil shall do evil. And, and the word of God says, be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good matters. Hallelujah. 
So if you sit in the midst of evil communications, those evil communications, the imagination of those evil communications shall enter into you. And if you allow that to, to be spoken into you over and over again, then that will change your ways, even if your ways have been good and right. Be not deceived, evil communication corrupt, they twist, they pervert good manners. Hallelujah. You don't need to allow just anyone to speak into you. You don't need to be sitting around people that's, that are speaking evil things, devising evil plans, uh, uh, sitting up thinking about how they can, you know, murder people and rob people and and cause people to be harmed and hurt. Those are wicked imaginations. And if you sit in the company of that and, and you receive that and you see yourself doing those things in your imagination, those are the very things that you shall go do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People that imagine evil shall do evil. People that imagine good shall perform good. You need to be in the company of good folk, wise people. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Thus saith the Lord. People that imagine adultery are those that perform adultery. People that imagine fornication are those that perform fornication. People that imagine stealing and defrauding people out of their resources are those that, that are stealing and defrauding people out of their resources. People that imagine lies and, and telling lies and deceiving people are those people that go about uh, lying and deceiving people. People that imagine failure are those that fail. People that imagine success are the successful. People that, people that imagine prosperity are the prosperous people. People that imagine success are successful. Healthy people are those that imagine their health. People that imagine prosperity are the prosperous. People that imagine defeat are the defeated. People that imagine their poverty are impoverished. The ones that inwardly visualize ungodliness are the ungodly. The best in God see themselves as the best in God. You cannot perform actions that have not been performed by you. You must perform an action in order for the action to be performed. You cannot do what you have not seen yourself do. Action occurs inwardly before it is expressed externally. You cannot do a thing that you have not imagined to do. What you consistently imagine yourself doing is what you shall do. In order to do a thing, you must see yourself doing that thing. Now, we acquire our imaginations from the Word of God. We look into the Word of God, hallelujah, to ascertain what God had said about specific matters. And then we, we see what God said with our imagination. And uh, we go about saying it, and of course, you know, as it applies to us in Christ Jesus, you know, God has, has done great and good things for us. Where we are glad. I mean, God has made us whole in Christ. God has given us all power. God has given us all authority right here on earth right now. God has given us wealth and riches. God has given us health and strength for our body. God has given us a sound mind. God has given us salvation for our, not only ourselves, but for our entire house. And those are the imaginations that we have. And we see ourselves, you know, uh, in the Word of God going about doing good. You know, because the Word of God tells us to go about doing good. Laying hands on the sick, we observe that they recover. We have those imaginations before we go out to do those things. Friends, see yourself as a successful person, and you are a successful person by the Word of God. Look in the Word of God. Find and discover who you are in Christ Jesus. You're a new creature now. Look in the Word of God and to determine what creature you are now. Friend, and everything about you now is of God. Let me give you the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So when you leave here, because you are leaving, and when you step out your physical body, because one day uh, you will step out your physical body, you will uh, be with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And that's for those people that have accepted Him as their Lord and Savior. Now the other people, they will be, that didn't accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they'll be, 
transported into hell fire. And they will wait there for the white throne judgment. And they will be called out of the hell fire and stand before God and be judged out of the books. And then they will be sentenced into the lake of fire and brimstone where they shall be for eternity, suffering, in agony, torment. But friend, that's not for you. Hallelujah. Fool self shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's call upon the name of the Lord today. Pray this prayer with me and you shall be saved. Father, I'm a sinner. I have sinned. I repent of my sins. I know Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I know you raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. I receive you. I'm made new. I'm saved. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Friend, you're saved. Hallelujah. This is the conclusion of the message. Imagine it. I love you. I'll talk with you at another time. Be 